Okay, guys, we're going to deploy a linear learner binary classifier with the default model monitor. We're going to hypertune the parameters, deploy it to a new endpoint data capture configuration, and we're also going to evaluate the deployed model, the second one, after the hyperparameter tuning, as well as a processing job, and get some suggested baseline constraints. Okay, guys, so you create your execution role. And then the SUV data set from Kaggle, the purchase, is the one I use. We're going to drop user ID and do label encoder to get rid of everything. Then we create our own bucket. X equals everything but purchased. Y equals the target purchased. As, of, as array, as type float 32. Y equals as type float 32, test train split the standard. Okay, and then we're going to upload it to uh, your train data and test data. Now remember, for your output path, uh, this is your output path, your output location. Your uh, X train shape, always do that after you do that because you're going to use that for your feature dim parameter. Okay, feature dim right there, binary classifier, mini batch size is 14. Deploy at this instance, but it's up to you. And remember your linear learner, that's your image URI in the container. Okay, you can do DF uh, info to make sure everything's good. Fit your train and test data. It actually did very well and it didn't need a hyper parameter tuning, but I wanted to show you guys how to do that. Okay. There's your training job. Okay. Data capture configuration for our first deployment. Okay. Request response. Destination URI equals this, the prefix. Okay. Linear result equals linear predictor predict x test. Here's what we did. Well, I kind of skipped that for you guys. JSON to serializer. Okay. Now, here's what we're going to do. Um, this Remember, this is what you do with binary classification. Although um, it, it does vary depending on which algorithm you use, but you can use mine for linear learner. Now, um, validation, binary classification accuracy, there's many of them you can use for the Bayesian strategy for, um, by, for classification algorithms with SageMaker. Better to use this formula though, although each data set is different. Okay, do your training job. And remember, include CLS metadata equals false. That way you don't get an error, a protobuf error. Remember, always do this. It doesn't matter which algorithm you use. Multi equals SageMaker attach the model from the training job. You can uh, find it on your um, logs on your hyperparameter tuning jobs. Copy and paste it, attach your model, and voila, there you go. Okay. Deploy along with data capture configuration equals from the first time. Predict X test. And there we go. DF2 equals actual and predicted. Okay, guys, here's one thing. We need to, the data set it was trained on and uh, stripped of, we need to upload that to our own uh, S3 bucket, right? So PD concat equals, and then drop, train CSV. And then you're going to find that on your S3 buckets and copy the URI, URL. And 
And here's where you're going to put it, right here. Trust me, guys, and it has to end in CSV. Don't try anything else. Otherwise, it'll fail 10 minutes later during the processing job. Okay, and then this is the processing job to get our little baselines. Should always be one cluster. Or something like this. In your logs. Although this stuff is pretty... Okay, this is how I'm going to do it. Okay, my monitor equals latest baseline job normalize features features. There you go. We're going to get to suggest it in a second. Okay, import time and then name your monitoring scheduled name. Basically, whatever you want with an F in these commas. And then strife time. No. Okay. And then uh, enable cloud metrics equals true. Hourly, of course, from all the other times. Create. Oh. Like I always said, use the endpoint you want. I could have used either endpoint, but... Because right now I have two models in the air. There's no executions, watch, yet scheduled. But we can still evaluate the model. Okay, predictions two from earlier, and then the cutoff. Cutoff equals in the middle, right? Okay. And then uh, MP arrange log loss equals 0 0.9, minimum equals 15. Yeah, there was a little bit of drift. Okay. Now, here's how you get your suggested constraints. By the way, this is how you tell if it's always, if it's even scheduled. It is. But. There's no executions. And then here's what you do uh, whenever an execution is happening to get logs without all this coding. Okay, SageMaker equals... Okay, your thing you named it earlier, remember? Max results equals three. The reason why it's a status code of 200 is because nothing's being executed right now when it sends the request. And remember, whenever you're going to take down these things, before you can delete the endpoint, you have to delete the monitoring schedule. Otherwise, it won't delete. Trust me. It was actually very accurate. Uh, it didn't need this um, hyperparameter tuning job. It actually didn't make it went up a percent for validation it was already pretty good okay guys I hope you learned from this video and here's what I meant by two endpoints oh and then uh, let me show you your baseline suggestions. Here's how you can see processing jobs. Yeah, you see? Now, here's what I wanted to show you. The hyperparameter tuning jobs. 
Okay. Here's where you go. I did uh, quite a bit of them, but uh, here's where you go. And then uh, you go get it. Go copy and paste it. As far as endpoints, let me show you. There's two, because remember I did the hyperparameter tuning and attached it to the model, then uh, deployed to a new endpoint. Okay, guys. Model monitoring is very important. It alerts you to model drift when it does an execution. Okay, guys, that's all. Thank you.